Hey everyone, I'm Nate. And I'm Abby. We are the RC Sailors. In this video, we're bringing you the review of the Ellen View Cicada. This is a brushless, ready to fly, 1080p, high definition quadcopter that uses your cell phone or other mobile device to fly rather than a transmitter. The major selling point of this is exactly what I just said. You don't have to carry around one of... Abby, will you grab that? <laughs> You don't have to carry around one of these anymore. So uh, you're gonna knock down from the, I mean, these are awesome, but you're going away from the bulkiness of this to something that you've always got on you at all times. So that's one less thing to worry about when you're traveling, going on a hike somewhere. You can throw this guy in your backpack in or out of the box and uh, get some sweet aerial shots of the lake with you and your buddies walking around, hiking, that sort of thing. So let's take a look inside. We did an unboxing. This is not going to be an unboxing here for you. I just want to. I, I'm kind of showing the point that this box is super it is sweet. It's a really nice box. And I, I would, if I put this in a backpack, I'd probably just take it in the box because the drone isn't much smaller than the box itself, and this keeps everything super organized. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look here. If you guys want to see everything that actually comes in it, be sure to check out our unboxing. I'll have it linked right here for you. When you get the drone out, you've got a lens cap on. You can adjust the angle of the, which you, what you're recording. And uh, the motors and props are protected by these really sweet little prop guards. This guy comes with a whole baggie full of spare props. I think it was like 12 or 16 propellers. 16, I believe. And it actually comes with two rechargeable batteries. They're proprietary batteries and they go right in the back of your right. quad here but they do the job and they fly for about 12 to 15 minutes each. Mm -hmm. It's got foam that the camera is sitting on which helps reduce any vibrations. There's really no jello effect in here. The only downside is this is kind of a half step drone. It's something you'd buy before the Zero Explorer but after the Dromeda Vista FPV because this is a high definition camera. You do need a micro SD card that slides right into the side of the quad here. Um, I'm flying on a 16 gig card and it does a wonderful job. Um, I've had no issues pulling the footage off or like, you know, recording formats or anything. Um, and you can actually adjust those. The drone itself is nice and compact and again it's flying on four brushless motors. So that's a huge selling point of this guy. The camera is actually a very nice 1080p Sony fisheye cicada. The lens cap is pretty cool. Yeah, it's a 16 <laughs> megapixel camera, so you're not losing anything in camera quality here. And it has nice gummy things under the motors, so when you set it down on a flat surface, it sits and stays there, mm -hmm. which is really nice. This is a very light, very light quadcopter, so I don't believe you'd have to worry about anything other than the FAA regulations on right. this guy. Although they're switching things around all the you time. You can't even keep track of it. And as Nate said, the batteries go right in the back little hatch there, and it actually comes with two batteries, and yeah. you get like a 15 minute flight time out of each, and the batteries are 1000 milliamp, 7.4 volt batteries, so you get Not two bad. of them, which is awesome. Not bad at all. The thing that I like about these batteries, unlike a lot of other batteries on the market for that are kind of universal, uh, I like Dean's connectors for things that I fly on, but I really like these because they don't have wires at all. They have metal contacts that I just uh, pulled the little dust cap off, yep. and the charging bay utilizes that too. So you don't have to worry about wires uh, hanging out, plugging them in. wire that plugs down there. That's right. So the quad itself has no wires dangling, the batteries have no wires, and the charger has the charging bay. So it's super sleek, super nice, and just keeps things clean and kind of professional looking. I really do like that about the Cicada quite a bit. Now let's talk about the app and um, what you can expect out of the app. It's very clean. It's very easy to use, and I wish I could show you a shot. Let me just, just open take a the... picture up. Like, take a screenshot and put that on. Okay. To power on the quad, you just put the battery in and you press the button on the bottom and it makes a little beep there. And it's gonna just do its binding process and booting up. It's putting off its own Wi-Fi signal and you'll, you'll connect your phone to that Wi-Fi signal. So I'm gonna do that right now. Connect to my Cicada, it's a very strong signal. 
And when you first open your app, it will ask you if you want to fly indoors or outdoors because of the GPS lock. For this example, I'm going to say indoors, but really this isn't this is not so much an indoor quad. If you live in a house any smaller than ours or about the same size, you mainly want to fly this outside. This is what you'll see when you start up. As long as you get a good connection, you'll see um, 14.9 gigs, it tells you how big the card is in the corner. Uh, just go around. At the bottom you've got slide to take off. That's how you initiate the motors and then you've got and that's your... also how you make the motors turn off uh -huh. when, after you engage them. It tells you your Wi-Fi signal strength, the battery level of the quad itself. Mine wasn't fully charged when I started this. And then you can press a, uh, to take a picture or record in the top right corners mm -hmm. there. Uh, the controls are what you see on the main part of the screen and in the top right, or I'm sorry, the top left corner when you hit that this little window opens up and it lets you view your gallery of things that you've filmed already while the quad is on. It'll stream them directly from the quad. You can adjust how sensitive it is, uh, if, what type of flight mode you want to fly with. That's what the keypad says there. And if you press hide, it'll actually hide most of the things on your heads up display. So when you press hide, it kind of looks like that. So I like having my heads up display, so I'll put it back on. And you can fly this with a few different modes. You've got the two little sticks there on screen and you tap the throttle basically to adjust the level that it flies. The GPS holds it there within about a half a foot and then you've got your yaw on the left side and you control it with uh, the buttons on the right side. You can press and hold those and just keep forward movement and kind of yaw around. I think that's the easiest way to fly is just to press and hold the right buttons and then yaw around and kind of tap and adjust the elevation as you go. You can also fly uh, by not having buttons, but you can have fake joysticks there, kind of like some games are on your phone. They have like fake joysticks, like a gamepad, you know, for a PS4, Xbox or something. Then you can additionally fly by holding your phone like this and tilting it to control the cicada, which works extremely well. Uh, we didn't use this very much though because when we were flying this guy, we were always flying in a ton of wind. I do not recommend that you do this because it really makes the GPS fight hard to hold that position. And we, we like flying FPV, which the main controls are easier to fly FPV yes. than tilting because then you would have a hard time seeing your screen. That's right. This guy flies on a Wi-Fi FPV connection and a lot of times Wi-Fi FPV has a really bad delay. This is actually the best Wi-Fi FPV connection I've ever seen on a quad. Now, probably because of the price point. It's not one of your cheap $20 barely working FPV quads. This actually works. And that goes a long way. I like it a lot. The FPV flight works. It records well. But if you want to get good, let's say, professional footage out of it, you really need to be flying in basically zero wind. Otherwise, you're just out to fly for fun. But just so you know, I just realized this. This has an f-stop or aperture of a 2.8. Which is pretty low, that's and that's pretty good. great. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty neat. I didn't know that. All in all, I really like the Ellen View Cicada for what it is. You don't want to look at this guy for what it's not. It doesn't have a gimbal, so you're not going to get super stable footage in high winds. But for everything that it is, it does really well. You fly it from your phone, so you're eliminating a huge bulky transmitter. That's one less thing you have to carry around with you. The batteries are small and sleek, and they have little caps on them. So you can tuck this guy away in a backpack and go for a hike and take it out and get some cool aerial pictures. And if it's not very windy, get some cool video of you guys hiking around. It does have a return to home feature, and it flies pretty well. It's got brushless motors which is huge they're not going to wear out as fast as little canned brushed motors so you should get a pretty long lifetime out of this guy for 350 dollars on towerhobbies.com you really can't go wrong with the ellen view cicada if it's what you're looking for and hopefully some of this footage that we've captured to show you guys kind of gives you a good impression of what you can expect out of this quad this is very much a stepping stone in between a super expensive quad and the cheap little guys that you've been flying around in the backyard it's just a nice HD, cool way to go. I like the Cicada. I think you guys should check it out. A lot of times Tower Hobbies has promo codes that you can mm -hmm. use to save some money, maybe even knock it down under $300. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.